Hey guys, today is a big day. I'm here in Brimfield, Massachusetts at one of the largest flea markets in the world. I have a pocket full of lunch money. Let's go hunting for comics. It's a reprint of 181. I don't think I have that one. Oh, that one. Goodness and abomination. Leader. Fifteen dollars. I'm not sure what that one is. So we take 15 bucks? Yep. Deal, there you go. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, made my first deal of the day. Spent $15 on a whole bunch of pretty good comic books. Got some incredible Hulk keys in there. And I just got started, so let's keep going. A lot of ground to cover. that every day <laughs> so this is actually my first of two days here at Brimfield it's just way too big of a flea market to do all in one day but not only that like each day they open up a different sort of market uh, there's different like fields they open up on different days so each time you come on each day of the week that they're here I mean you can find something new every single time so definitely gonna be two days for me um, I just got started and I've really just barely uh, hit the tip of the iceberg Crazy. What do you have on them? Just you got them all? <laughs> Depends. <laughs> I'm sure you looked through them. I didn't. I have no oh. idea. I haven't even looked. This whole tote's got like good ephemera in it. I have oh, not even looked through God. it in probably 10 years. Okay. Let me uh, let me look. I honestly have no clue what's in here. It's fun. All right. I'm in a, another flea market here. Among all the flea markets. Man. I mean, you guys should picture like... 20 separate flea markets, all essentially in a one mile strip of land. 
It's nuts. It's been a lifetime here. Great cover, but pretty beat up. It's a really cool Doctor Doom cover. First Blastar. Right, this one is really cool. Jack Kirby cover, Doctor Doom. But I think the condition's too bad for the price. This one's in really terrible condition, but really cool. And this one is a great cover. Uh, 15 for the two? All that good stuff. But... again. Shows and then I'm based in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. I don't. I don't sell online, but uh, but I've, I, I've done 70, more than 75 shows in a row up here. I do all three. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That was a better copy of that one. Really better. With that on it, but I told him how to take it off, and he got it off. He got it off unprofessionally, but it. My blog here. Hey, you thanks a, a lot. Appreciate it. I got a great bag for it, actually. I appreciate it. Thanks right. a lot. That's a great personal collection book right there. Yeah. Soaking wet. Soaking wet. Can't even pull it apart. So there we go, uh, 
day one of Brimfield in the books. Um, I'm definitely going to have to come back. I just did not have nearly enough time to even go to half of this flea market. So I think I did pretty good. I got some uh, really good deals in some places and then I got a really good comic book for my personal collection that I might send in to get graded. So see you at home, I'll show you what I got. So there you go, guys. That was day one at Brimfield, Massachusetts. As I mentioned in the video, it's not only one of the largest flea markets in the country, but it's also one of the oldest. And if you've never been before, it's incredibly impressive. It's more like 20 different flea markets all adjacent to one another over about a mile stretch of roadway. It happens three times a year in May, July, and September for about a week each time. If you're someone who's into antiques and you live in the Northeastern United States, I highly recommend you make the pilgrimage to Brimfield at least once in your lifetime. I'll make sure to put a link to the website down in the description so you could plan your trip there for 2023. Although I would recommend you do what I did this year and do it over multiple days to make sure you see everything. So the first comic vendor that I found was actually pretty close to where I parked. I was at his tent within about 15 or 20 minutes um, and I knew he would be there. I mean, he's been there basically, I think, all summer in the same location and he has a lot of comic books in those long boxes. You know, it, it would take a long time to do your full diligence and go through every single one of those boxes. So every time I've seen him, I sort of just go through a couple of them, pull out what I can and move on. So I got seven books for him and I spent a grand total of $15 and I think I got a pretty good deal. The first two are really simple. These are two Uncanny X-Men books that I do not have. I'm trying to sort of fill in this Chris Claremont run for my personal collection. I didn't have these, so into the collection they go. And then I got these five Incredible Hulks. First up, we have number 164. This is from 1973. It's the first appearance of Captain Omen and Colonel Armbruster. These two guys right here. Next up, we have the Incredible Hulk number 183. This is the second Zazax, this electricity guy. Next up, we have the Incredible Hulk number 193. This is just a classic battle between Hulk and Doc Samson you see on the cover. Thought it was kind of neat. We have the Incredible Hulk number 359. This one uh, I just got because the cover is amazing. Look who's on it. We got Hulk, Abomination, Thing, and Wolverine all on the same cover. Really cool. This one's from uh, 1989. Just an awesome cover. Had to have it. But the last Hulk I found was uh, actually a pretty good key. And this is sort of a uh, good news, bad news, good news situation. This one here is The Incredible Hulk number 282. And this one is from 1983. And this is the first team up between Hulk and She-Hulk. So very cool. Depending on the condition, you know, this can go for a little bit of money. So the good news is it's a great key. The bad news is it's in terrible condition. Really, really bad. And even when I got it, I was like, ah, eh, maybe I might be able to clean it up. Probably not. Um, but the other good news is I actually, because the condition was so bad, I took it upon myself to try to clean this up using some, you know, absarine and stuff. And yeah, I got rid of a lot of the dirt and grime. And there's still all sorts of issues on the spine and, you know, with color breaking uh, folds and things like that. But I made it look a lot better than when I found it. And it's a really a cool comic book. I think you're going to see some more Hulk, She-Hulk action in the MCU moving forward. Really cool book. Really happy to have it. There's another really cool pop culture factoid with this comic book here. In the Disney movie Cool Runnings about the Jamaican bobsled team, the character of Sanka is seen reading this very comic book in the hotel. I'll put a picture up right here so you can see and be reminded of it. Has nothing to do with the comic book. I just thought it was a cool little Easter egg and something worth sharing. I also want to point out that in the footage, you saw me go past a book that had, you know, Hulk fighting the Wendigo and Sasquatch and it had a $15 price tag on it. I didn't know what it was. I figured it was a key. I didn't look it up, but I found out afterwards it was the third appearance of Rocket Raccoon. The last time I was at Brimfield and was picking through this guy's stuff up on the shelf, he had pulled out some, you know, better books and he had the second appearance of Rocket Raccoon where Rocket's right on the cover with the Hulk. Very cool comic book. I thought about it last time, but just goes to show, you know, there's still some minor keys in these boxes. You just got to dig. So next up, I found a vendor who had a lot of sort of eclectic things and he had two boxes of comic books and they were in pretty bad shape and they were all varied prices, really. And um, I actually had the footage for it. I cut it um due to time and uh honestly there wasn't that much good stuff in it but i took out the ones i thought were the best so first up i have this old combat battle at dunkirk um this is from 1965 it's a 12 cent dell and um i love these old war books especially if they have uh airplanes on them so i was happy to have this one i got it for a couple of dollars and that's going to go on the wall behind me the other two books he had were Supervillain team up number three and number four. These depict a team up between Namor the Submariner and Doctor Doom. We know we'll see Namor soon in Wakanda forever, and there are rumors all over the place that Doctor Doom 
Could be in that movie, but he's certainly coming at some point. I actually have number two of this series. I've been looking for number one, but you know, these were a couple of dollars. I was happy to grab them. Really cool part of number three is that you also, also have a Tuma on the cover, and we know he's going to be in Wakanda forever as well. A couple of good books. So towards the end of the footage, you saw me find a vendor who had several long boxes, and uh, I mentioned how one of them was soaking wet. The comic books were literally saturated. And the reason for that is on the first day of the flea market, we had a torrential downpour, which is actually a good thing because we're having a, a pretty bad drought around here, like a lot of people in the country. So we needed the rain, but I thought that was going to sort of wash out all the people at the first day of Brimfield. Come to find out, um, it was packed anyways. People still showed up with umbrellas to pick through the good stuff. Unfortunately, this gentleman's comic books were too close to the edge of the tent, and they got absolutely drenched. There were only a few comic books worth looking at, and those ones weren't that good. But right next door to him was another guy who had comic books, and he did a much better job of keeping his comic books in the center of the tent, and they stayed nice and high and dry. He had these all for $2 each, so I'm going to go through them really quick. We have three books from the 1982 Hercules miniseries. We have number two, three, and four. Hercules had two miniseries in the 1980s, a 1982 series here, and a 1984 series two years later. Um, I have the 1984 series, you know, Hercules we saw show up in the last Thor movie in the post credit scene. Hercules is coming to the MCU trying to collect these books. I think they're pretty good spec buys. On top of that, though, in one of the last collections I got, one of my videos, you can check it out. I got Hercules number one that belonged to the set. So I was happy for just $6. I could finish the entire set of the 1982 miniseries of Hercules. Okay, so next up we have Squadron Supreme number one. This is number one of a 12 part mini series featuring the team. They are essentially Marvel's, you know, pastiche uh, knockoff of the Justice League. We have, um, you know, Hyperion, who's a version of uh, Superman here, Power Princess, who's Wonder Woman, you know, Wizard is Flash. Um, Nighthawk is, you know, pretty much Batman. And um, I think they're pretty neat. I mean, I think they're more of like a curiosity than anything. They've showed up variously as heroes and villains in Marvel Comics. And I think, you know, these guys, certainly with like the multiversal shenanigans that's going on in the MCU over the next couple of years, I think there's a higher likelihood of seeing this team show up on the silver screen. If only I had numbers 2 through 12. Well, through the power of foresight and the fact I'm filming this after my second trip to Brimfield, I think you're going to see in my next video I fill out the collection pretty well. Okay, next up we have Soviet Super Soldiers number one. This book here features a whole bunch of, you know, Russian or Soviet era villains and heroes on one team. You have Red Guardian right there, Ursa Major, Crimson Dynamo. I think this is a Dark Star. So, I don't know, I think it's kind of fun. There's a lot of really cool uh, Russian, you know, villains and heroes in Marvel Comics. And this is sort of combining them all into its, its own volume. So, I don't know, thought it was kind of neat. I hadn't seen it before, grabbed it. But the final $2 book I got out of this collection is probably the best. This is Civil War. This is a trade paperback of the entire Civil War storyline from 2007. Listen, these trade paperbacks actually go for quite a bit. You know, I think the sticker price on this right here is $25. You know, even used, these can go around like, you know, 15, 20 bucks. So this was $2. I'm always happy to grab a, an anthology or a trade paperback so I can read the whole story. Although I read Civil War back when it came out, it's great to have this in one place. It's also pretty cool for like, if my son wants to read it and check it out. So yeah, trade paperback for $2 all day, every day, guys. Absolutely. Okay, last but certainly not least, you saw in the footage, I found a vendor who had lots of comic books and magazines, mostly from like the silver and gold age. You know, he specializes in lots of like westerns and funnies. He has lots of like Dell and gold key books. But he always goes to Brimfield, and I know he always has a couple of boxes set aside for DC and Marvel. And so I went right towards those ones, and I think you see in the footage, he had a whole bunch of amazing Spider-Mans, you know, in pretty okay shape in front of the box. And within the box, he had lots of, like, old Silver Age Fantastic Four and Thor. And, um, and he also had a whole bunch of DC um, comic books right next door to it. And, um, you know, I always go through them. They're fantastic. They vary in condition from fair to just flat-out poor. I basically, I grabbed one of the comic books that I really liked and brought it to the front. I was going to pay for it. And he said, well, you got to look through this box. And where he was, like at his table, where his cash box was, he had another short box. So I went into that and that was like all the good stuff. And every book, I think you see in the footage, just awesome condition books, you know, um, all keys, DC and Marvel keys. And every one of them was like $200 and up. But I went through most of the box. And when I got to the end, I found another comic book. And that comic book was this. Now, what was interesting about this one is that the comic book I had brought to the front to buy was this. So we had two copies of it. I had the worst copy, 
This is a nicer copy. I put them side by side, you know, sort of negotiated with him and decided I would go with this one. Now, this is a Fantastic Four number 73. This is from 1968 with an incredible cover by Jack Kirby. You have three of the four members of the Fantastic Four. You have three of the most, you know, marquee Silver Age Marvel guys right next to it. You have with Daredevil, Thor, and the Amazing Spider-Man. I love the look of this book. And uh, what was really interesting is a few flea markets ago, and you can probably find the footage uh, in a previous video, is that I found this book in raw form, just sitting in a long box. And this square here that says giant guest star bonanza had been cut out. And in the video, I'm kind of like bummed out because I'm like, wow, it's such a cool looking comic book. That's too bad. It's trashed. Well, now I have a really nice copy of it. The other reason I definitely gravitated towards this and why I wanted to pay a little bit more on the condition was that it's so well preserved and in such good condition. It almost looks like it was, um, you know, cleaned and pressed. And I actually asked my friend from Comic Spa, who does all my cleaning and pressing, if that was the case. And he said, no, he thinks someone just kept it in really good shape. The only blemishes you can really see is there's a couple of tears, very, very small tears right here, like on Thor's cape. But otherwise, this book is beautiful. The back looks great. And I think I'm going to have this one cleaned up a little bit and maybe even get it graded if I think it can present really well in a slab. Now, we had a lot of other comic books, this gentleman, that I was really interested in, but I was not able to really like pull the trigger on them. But um, if you stay tuned to my uh, next video, which is Brimfield Day 2, uh, which is closer to the end of the flea market, I was able to go back there and I made a deal for some of the comic books that you might have seen in that footage. So, Fantastic Four, number 73, awesome book, beautiful book. So happy to add this to my collection. So there you go, guys. That was Brimfield Day 1. All told, I spent about five hours there. I ended up with 21 comic books, and I spent, I think, $92 on all of them. And um, I'm okay with a, a lot of my purchases. You know, nothing too, too great. Happy to have this in my collection. Um, also happy to have this one, despite its condition. Lots of sort of little things I can sprinkle into my collection. A couple things I might want to hold on to for trading. But all in all, I thought it was pretty successful for the four or five hours I was there. But... I only saw probably a third of the entire flea market. It's that big. So my next video, I do go back to Brimfield and dare I say, for less money, I ended up with a bigger and much better haul than what I have. So definitely stay tuned. The next video is definitely the better Brimfield video. So this has been Lunch Money Comics, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this content, go down and hit the like button and consider subscribing so that you get updated whenever I post a new video. I hope you guys keep hunting for comic books and that you find them in strange and unusual places as well. And I will see you guys next time at the flea markets.